It is 10.06 a.m. and I had one trade with ILUS. I also had a verified cancel with ALNAQ. I just wasn't able to be filled in that one. But let's go over the one I did get in. I was looking at ILUS. It's having an uptrend. It's not too bad, especially because they had a very considerable amount of volume. Although I guess I see a lot of red volume now. Yeah, it's not in the best place when you look at a multi-day chart, but... I mean, if this thing can continue to start something, maybe like something back here, that would be nice. Of course, it'd be better if it had like a lot more volume from all of this right here, this range. If it just has like a big volume blip like here, it could mean that, you know, it could actually try to uptrend for more. But I do like how it's trying so hard to just hang up there. And there was like a big seller right here at 86. I just got taken out. That's actually kind of interesting. I'll make an update later. Okay, I am back. Uh, let's just go over the first trade and then I'll go over the next trade with ILUS. The idea with ILUS was that it had a super nice uptrend from the 76s. It got as high as 87, which doesn't seem like much perhaps, but I mean, that is, um, that's like at least a 10% move, maybe 15%. And then it had a downtrend and I thought that, you know, we had a nice uptrend. Now we're going to have a downtrend and now it can be like a bull flag setup. And maybe it can also do something where it gets under VWAP and then it turns around. I did buy 3,500 shares at 943. And that was at this point right here at 943. And I didn't like my entry too much. That was at 85 because I just figured that maybe it had the uptrend, the downtrend. And now it's already going to turn around. And I'm in at 85 and it's going to continue to... Um, move higher after this point but that was not really the case I did sell everything the next minute at 944 and that was at um, 84 and a half so right here is when I got out I lost maybe like a dollar and 50 cents it was a scratch it just didn't seem to look like it was going to do it the way I thought it was again the uptrend downtrends bull flag and then it starts to reverse I'm in at 85 and then you know it just seemed like it was too much topping price action and if i can go back i do have a screenshot just showing the price action i also wasn't really ideal looking it wasn't too bad at this point but there was a big seller as you can see this was like 1.5 million shares right here at 87 which is the high so it felt like there was not a lot of breathing room because there was a big seller there and that's why i got out it did downtrend it did dip below vwap and I got in the setup again at this point because, I mean, it was just interesting how I was trying to hang on at this level for such a long period of time. Even though there were like these big sellers at 86 and I believe 86 um, and a half or maybe 87, I think in the other video where all of this volume was happening right when I ended it. All of those big sellers were getting wiped out. And if you were to take a look at this also, this looks a little bit like... Um, it almost looks like an, um, what do you call it? A symmetrical triangle. You can also have one like this, right? And then maybe like one like this, perhaps. Or I guess in this case, you could extend it here. And then if you extend this one to the right. You can see there was a point where in this poorly drawn symmetrical triangle, it did do like a breakout. And I was looking at that, even though I didn't have like the trend lines. And, you know, I just figured that I was just going to top out and not really do anything. But when all of these big sellers at the ask were getting taken out, I did have an interest and I bought 3,500 shares again at 862. That was at 1008. Right here, I got in 3,500 shares and I was going to get out if it was going to break below VWAP, which was like 84. And worst case scenario, big red candle just breaks under VWAP and I'm out at the day low. That's according to my $40 risk level. Again, that's like worst, worst case scenario. Not really something that's going to happen um, almost every single time, but I do have that into consideration. And it did continue to uptrend. I did sell in pieces. I sold a thousand at 1010 right here. And that was at 872, my first sell. And then I sold another the next minute at 877. And then even though it broke past the trend line, I did hold on to more than half of my position, 1,500 shares. And when it broke past the trend line, we did have like a really nice um, person at the bid that was supporting it. As you can see by this candle right here, there was a big, um, not seller, a bidder. 
again supporting it and when it got wiped out that was kind of scary i wasn't really happy with that price action so i did get out ultimately at 10 14 the next minute and that was at 884 so yeah this one um worked out i think i had the right amount of shares too i'll continue to watch and see what this one does but this is essentially a symmetrical triangle or you can even call it like a bigger bull flag it also looks like a bull flag just again uh, maybe not as quick as this one that i was trying to go for in the very beginning but um you know something a bit larger and i did have that verified cancel this one pains me i did <laughs> i did try to buy 1500 shares right here at 934 Right here at 934 is when I placed the order at 55. Why? Well, it had like, um, you know, a pretty beaten up, you know, day the other day. And then we opened at this point and it looked like it was going to go from red to green. And it was also trying to break past this 55 resistance level. And unfortunately, I placed my order at 934, 935. And, you know, 936 came by and it just... You know, <laughs> I really missed out, and that one really sucks, but it's not like I would have sold all the way at the 80s or something crazy like that. And, uh, yeah, this one could also be um, a symmetrical triangle, perhaps. But I just don't really like this one anymore. You know, after I missed out on that first one, it lets me draw one, maybe something like this. Right, yeah, it looks like it could try to maybe uptrend. Perhaps it could be a setup if it breaks above 74. And it can do another run up perhaps because it's kind of like already broken past it and it just hasn't done anything. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it for right now. I will make an update later. I'll keep watching ILUS. I mean, best case scenario, it can try to uptrend for more than one day. Maybe something like this or something better. I'll make an update later. Okay, it is 11.41, and I haven't traded anything, and that's probably my fault since the last recording, but I do have a bunch of things I'm going to start doing, so I might not be able to trade anything else. I just want to go over the setups. There's nothing with PPCB that I'm interested in. I don't like how it just sold off so much the other day. And yes, it's trying to rebound now, but the volume isn't really that nice. TGGI is just hanging in there. It could ideally be a setup if it breaks 18. And it could ideally continue the uptrend. Maybe it'll do another downtrend higher than this one ideally. And that could be something for the future. This one did do the thing I was talking about. I broke past 74 and I just hesitated. Because, I mean, I don't know. It just threw me off that I missed out on this one at 55. And then this one I was interested in as well. But it just shot all the way back and it sold off. And then at this point, it did do it eventually, and it made a move from the 74s as high as the 84s, which isn't bad at all. That's a nice uh, percent difference. And then GEGI keeps downtrending. I'm not interested in it. This one doesn't do any proper bounces. IOUS eventually broke past its 92 level, and it has continued the uptrend. And if we look at a daily chart now, there's actually a lot more volume, which is ideal. I want to see if this thing can uptrend for more than just one day. I can try a whole bunch of different setups if it can, um, you know, continue to do that. So, yeah, this one's pretty cool. I'll make an update if I happen to trade something. If not, it's going to be when the market is closed. Okay, it is 10.47 p.m. and I'm here to call it off. Overall, I'm going to be up on the day. Just 4 bucks and 5 cents trading IOUS twice. The first one was that um you can call it a bull flag setup that didn't really work out in the morning as you can see right here it just wasn't really successful there were some big sellers at the ask and it did do the downtrend and it did continue to get below vwap a little but it did continue later and it made a move towards the upside and that's what made that symmetrical triangle or you can call it a even bigger bull flag and that was a setup i did take way back here at 10.08 so the next minute right around here and yeah um maybe it could have held for a higher low but um i'm just happy that i had a trade here that worked because i had a lot of scratches the other week a lot of setups that just didn't work out and i'm glad this one really worked out and it made a higher low off of the level here at vwap and then it got to the 90s 
and then another higher low and then hit, hit a wall right here but once this wall broke this was another setup and I just wasn't there for that one I could have been a part of this one ideally and this would have been a super profitable trade too because they uptrended a lot just out of curiosity maybe a trend line from here to the corner of this candle that is uptrending it would have been a sale at that point around this level here you can see you even had a wick so a sell into that 10 cent and a half point and then considering an entry once it was breaking past this range at 93 that's pretty cool and it got to 11 uh these lines are from some other days that you know i drew it and it just hasn't been deleted since that's pretty much it for today just on um, those two trades right there and i missed one right here nothing with gegi i think people are going to be less interested in trading these choppy stocks including this one when it trades all ugly with a spread when you have something clean like ilus and that shows the volume is a lot better than the other ones if you ask me and it's a much um you know higher price otc compared to the other ones 73 million shares traded and again it's much more expensive what makes it pretty ideal nothing with tggi yeah that's pretty much it uh just two trades and a third one that really worked out that i could have traded